Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us once again on this Saturday afternoon for our daily English news edition. As usual, I'm Daniel Cook, your host, Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m. According to the World Bank report entitled Paying Taxes 2016, Albania has dropped 11 rankings this year in the payment of taxes. Currently, the country is ranked 142nd, whereas a year ago, it was in the position of 131st in the bank's ratings. According to the report, Albania has experienced a larger increase in the total tax rate than any other country over the past year. Regarding the number of taxes that citizens have to pay, only Serbia has fewer than Albania. All the countries of the region have made improvements, but Macedonia is the clear leader. According to the World Bank Index, Macedonia is ranked in the seventh place globally. Montenegro is in 64th place and Kosovo in 67th. The only country in the region that Albania has surpassed is Serbia, which is ranked in the 143rd place. According to the report, Albania is the country that has experienced the largest increase in total taxes. The World Bank estimates that the total tax rate that Albanians pay is 36.5%, while just a year ago, the percentage was 31.2. The majority part of the total is made up by labor taxes at 18.8%, and income taxes at 14.1%. In this regard, Albania is the least competitive country in the region. The only country in the region that pays higher taxes than in Albania is again Serbia, which pays 39.7%. In Macedonia, the rate is 12.9%. In Montenegro, 21.6%, 15.2% in Kosovo, and 20% in Croatia. In the 2016 draft report, the Ministry of Finance says that it expects to generate 8.9 billion lek from the Operation Against Informality, or about 64 million euro. This is about 300 million euro less than the Minister of Finance initially promised at the beginning of the operation. In the document, the Ministry of Finance includes its primary focal points for 2016. First, the Ministry aims to import 3,000 tons of cigarettes compared to the 2,600 tons that were planned in, in 2015. The ministry aims to increase the import of fuel by 3.4% compared to last year. This is based on the increased fuel consumption between January and September of 2015 compared to that of 2014. The ministry aims to collect 2.8 billion lek from the value added tax. The ministry indirectly admits that the main problems with evasion and informality lie in the customs administration and especially excise goods. The Ministry of Finance clarifies in the draft report that it is too early to estimate the additional revenue from the fight against informality and that the forecast for 2016 does not include the extra income from the main items of the tax revenue. In continuation of his tour called To Further Clean Albania, Prime Minister Rama was in fear today addressing the Socialist Party members. He encouraged his party not to work for their own interests, but for the good of the people. Rama condemned nepotism in the public administration and called the Socialist Party members to avoid showing favoritism. He said, the Socialist Party representatives in the government, in the parliament, in the city councils, wherever they are, should represent the interests of the citizens, not their own. They should represent the larger family of the Socialist Party and not their own family. They should represent the people who elected them and not their cousins. Rama added that hiring should be done based upon merit, and he criticized the citizens of Fier for not including more women in their organizations. At a time when terrorism is threatening Europe and the world, President Buyar Nishani has convened the National Security Council to discuss the precautions that need to be taken in Albania. The meeting will be held at 7 p.m. and media presence will not be allowed. It has been learned that Prime Minister Rama, Foreign Minister Deepmir Bhushati, Interior Minister Saimir Tahiri, the head of the General Staff of the Armed Forces, Yeronim Baze, and the Director of the State Informative Service, Visho Lika, will all be attending the meeting. After the terrorist attacks in Paris, all the Albanian authorities have agreed that Albania is not immune to the threat of extremism. To mitigate the risk of, ter of terrorism here in Albania, the government has adopted a strategy prepared by the local and foreign advisors. The 
The Council of Mandates has rejected the request of the Democratic Party to remove the socialist MP Valentina Leskai from office. The Democrats accused the MP of violating the law on conflict of interest, since her two sons have benefited from tenders of the public funds. The Democrats claim that the Leskai's sons have received the concession for the Fier and Vlora railways and the tender to train the operators of the electricity distribution system. The Democrat Arben Ristani explained the accusation. The fact has become public that one of the sons of Valentina Leskai has benefited from the public funds, taking a concession for a segment of Albanian railway. Meanwhile, her other son has won a tender from the Ministry of Agriculture, receiving millions of lek. Both of these contracts have been reached with state institutions, and according to the Constitution, this is not allowed. Leskai's sons have now sold the contracts after the denouncement of the Democratic Party. For this reason, we think that the mandate of the MP Valentina Leskai should be removed, said Ristani. Leskai's defense lawyer Arben Haidari said that the law on conflict of interest has no restrictions for family members of a lawmaker when the lawmaker does not vote on the agreements or have any influence over them. The Democrats said that they knew that their request would be denied, even though they are convinced that the socialist MP violated the law. Her fellow socialist, Ulsi Manya, made the statement that the request was only intended to attack Leskai politically, since it was not based upon the law. He did concede that the law on conflict of interest needs to be reviewed and further adapted within the Constitution. That concludes our edition for this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Please join us again on Monday for more translated news in English. Thanks. Have a great weekend.